hip, hip, hooray for DNA. It provides the key to the plans for making everything in you and me. I'm going to start by making a quick analogy or comparison between the idea of writing a book and making proteins. So I'll compare writing a book to making proteins. And you can show you that they're actually quite similar, or the main concepts are quite similar. So when we're writing a book, the first thing we need to actually have is we need to have letters, right? Without letters, we wouldn't be able to write a book itself. So letters are important for writing a book. Just like for making proteins, we need to have these bases. We need to have um, adenine, thymine, guanine, cytosine, and uracil. These are basically our letters of protein production. That's the first step. We need to have letters for writing a book and bases for making protein. Second step is we need to actually be able to produce all those letters. We need to be able to make words. So, for example, we need to say, have, you know, put these words together, these letters together, to make words that actually make sense, right? It's not just randomly put them together, but make sense out of them. Same thing with our making proteins. Here we have codons, a code for amino acids. So that's more or less just like you know, a chunk of bases that now actually mean something, right? They mean something. So in this case, you know, they might mean they might um, be a certain amino acids that we can produce with them. So this one might code for uh, this amino acid, and this one might code for this amino acid. And you know the last one might code for this amino acid. So now we have bases, but we put them in sequences so that they actually make sense and they allow us to do something. So in this case, produce amino acids. In the other case, with writing a book, we make words out of letters. Now, after we have words, what we need to do next, we need to put them into sentences, right? So if we only have random words, that's still not allowed to, not enough to make us write a book. If we can use those words to make a sentence, that's much better. So now we have, you know, there's a bat on my plate. So now I've put these words into a certain sequence, and now that sequence makes sense. Well, it doesn't really, but not my case, but generally it does. Um, and same thing when it comes to making proteins. So now we have these amino acids, and the next step is that we are these amino acids. By putting them in the right sequence, we can make polypeptide chains. Right? So here we connect these polypeptide chains together. By putting them in a certain sequence, and ultimately what we produce is a polypeptide chain that has a purpose. Just like a sentence, they have a purpose as well. And finally, in a book we have chapters, right? I have the beginning chapter, and you know, the main part might consist of a couple of chapters, and we have the end. So they're not just you know, one sentence or that is important, but a lot of sentences can make chapters which are, have meaning. And same with polypeptides. With polypeptides, we can make polypeptides into proteins, not just one protein, but many different types of proteins. So, for example, hemoglobin to carry oxygen, collagen for our skin, enzymes to make our chemical reactions occur. And that's by combining different polypeptides together to make these proteins, which are absolutely essential for our body to work. All right, so, writing a book can be compared to making proteins. There's some similarities when it comes to the basic steps involved. And why did I mention this? Well, we have to actually, in this dot point, we have to actually go through models. It says, students will perform a first hand investigation or process information from secondary sources to develop a simple model for polypeptide production. So we're going to go for a simple model of polypeptide production, something that you might have covered in class or you might have done it a bit differently. But the idea is just that you make a model which allows you to simplify the idea. Right, so what you might have, you might have, this might be on a poster, right? So all of this might be a poster that you have in, in class. And then you have some materials as well. So you get random materials that you can choose from. You know, there might be paddle pop sticks, there might be um, toothpicks, different colors, all that kind of stuff. Just different kind of material that you can use to make your model. So let's say this is our paper and we have a blue, a blue paper. That blue paper is meant to represent our cytoplasm, which is most of our cells swims in that cytoplasm. And then what you could do is you can cut out a sort of grayish part, and that might represent our nucleus. That's our nucleus. And remember, in the nucleus we have our DNA. So the DNA, you can actually make the, the backbone of the DNA. So the phosphate groups and the ribose sugars, you might be make out of your petal pop sticks. And you might have 
two different colors for pedal pop sticks, one red, one blue, or you might not. And obviously the bases are here, so these are the bases. And what you might have with bases, you might just use different colored different colored toothpicks if you have them. If not, then you use anything that just allows you to do the same function. So you use your different colored toothpicks and then just attach them to your backbone, your DNA backbone. Now obviously make sure you label your toothpicks, what stands for what, what color stands for what. And then what you can do next is you should obviously have this opening up, right? So the actual structure should open up so we can make a copy out of it. And this is where our uracil comes into place because we need to know about uracil because that's in our mRNA has uracil instead of thiamine. And this purplish part, which might be made out of, let's say, might be a um, st straw. This could be a straw. This could be our mRNA backbone. And then what you would do is you would just attach the correct sequence of actual nucleotides. So a this one would be C, so you would connect a, sorry, we'll copy this one on top here. So this is an A, so an A opposite it would be a U. This is a G opposite would be the C, so we have a C here. A T opposite would be an A. This here is an A, the opposite would be a U for U for the mRNA, because that's the mRNA. A C opposite would be a G. A T opposite would be an A. A G opposite would be a C. A A the opposite would be a U. Again, it would be U because there is no T in mRNA. And a C the opposite would be a G. So now we have, this is translation, right? So you would say, okay, this was translation. And now what you would do is you could take your toothpick or your straw and bring it out into the cytoplasm. And this is, and what is in your cytoplasm? Well, you would have, this could be made out of, for example, out of um, plasticine, like the, the, the Play-Doh stuff. This could be your ribosome. And here you'd have in your, your TNR, tRNA waiting. And you have them waiting to make sure that you have the correct sequence of things transferring. So you might have like a small ball, it could be whatever, it could be different colors, it's representing different types of amino acids. You would have your mRNA backbone, which is this here. And you have your anticodons attached as well. And then what you could do is you could just, yeah, you could let them try to fit the correct ones and produce its polypeptide chain that way. So this is a simple model. The idea would just be that you, have, you represent polypeptide synthesis for simple modeling class, and you usually get some equipment that you can use, and then you have to think about what can you use to do each individual step, making sure that you have translation, transcription, and you show it to the highest degree possible in terms of realistic and accurate. It can't be completely accurate, but it can be as accurate as possible. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.